there's a lot of great little great metaphors in the course and they seem to they seem to address the mind at different levels of awakening <clears throat> sometimes it seems like the spirit is speaking to you as if you're a separate person um, sometimes it's it's almost like it's a, addressing the collective the collective you kind of you and at other times it seems like it's addressing the purely spiritual you you know you are the holy son of god himself you know that's not aimed at any kind of collective or person or individual and i would say that the the errors are corrected from the bottom up so uh, a top down approach would be god is love all is one all is love uh, and that's accurate uh, but it's just that it's it just flies over the head of, of everyone on the planet if Jesus had just come here 2,000 years ago and He just had two words to share God is And then he kind of did a little Truman <coughs> show bow said, good afternoon good evening and good night and poof He just had vanished <laughs> He probably would have been forgotten pretty quickly. It was like I, I saw some kind of mirage, and there was a few of us that saw it, but it was the strangest thing. It's just this guy showed up with his long hair, and he said, God is, and then he, was, he vanished. Uh, and, and quickly forgotten. No, he came, and, and he was using, teaching with all these parables, whether it was with the apostles in the upper room, or in public, standing in a boat, or on the mount, the Sermon on the Mount, and so on and so forth. And it really was a bottom-up uh, approach where a lot of the course is spoken as if the separation has occurred as if there's two parts of the mind one part that has denied spirit and one part that remembers spirit and it's all very practical it's written as if and when we talk about healing people talk about sometimes healing the planet or you know healing through groups or you know all different kind of aspects of it but the more you go into it, you start to realize that that really there's only one ego and there's only one mind that seems to be sleeping and it's your own. <laughs> and and it's sneaky because you you see all these people, the ego peopled the world, and it seems like they've all got minds of their own and they're all sleepwalking too. And it's like then you've got instead of one problem, you've got like seven billion problems. Uh, walking around seven billion problems interacting with themselves every day which is kind of a mess really when you think of it it's like talk about a traffic jam uh, seven billion egos trying to make it on planet earth without blowing the place up <laughs> you know with <laughs> nuclear weapons or something and sometimes it seems to get pretty close to that you know but actually the deeper you go you start to realize that every lesson is always for your own consciousness for your own awareness and at first it just it doesn't make any sense that there's only one of us here it just it just doesn't seem there's so much evidence that it's more complicated than that but through miracle working and through giving yourself over to spirit as you let yourself if you let your body and let everything in your mind everything your resources skills abilities all be used uh, you know, you talk about these deja vu feelings. I, I actually had experiences when I was going around, traveling around the United States and Canada and the world, where I'd be speaking in groups, and I was like hearing what was coming through for the very first time. And it's still that way. You know, I will be talking and a song will come through or a parable will come through, and it's, sometimes it's I, I'm like, oh, this is a new one. I You know, it's like watching and observing, watching, like this is this is brand new. I'm listening too, and I found that that's what was happening. That everything was being spoken was was really for my own mind, and and it was a mechanism for me to hear the the spirit and and hear what I needed to hear, just by trying to be truly helpful for seemingly others. That was my mechanism to hear what I needed to most hear, and that's a, a great way to to move quickly through the spiritual process is hearing what you need to hear getting it getting those lessons 
So in the early years, when I was just working with the course at the beginning, and then and I just kind of memorized the course, and I was so devoted into it, then the travel years came after that. And when I was traveling and in a different place every day, meeting new people every day, nothing was stable in the world of form. I was like on the move. I was, I was going around 49 of the 50 states, not Alaska, but I mean the other 49 states I was generally on the move and then up into Canada too. I kept getting this one lesson in my mind which was, it's your own lesson, it's, it's your lesson. It just would come in like a broken record, it's your lesson, your lesson, your lesson. But, 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 your lesson, your lesson, your lesson, your lesson. Everywhere I would go, it didn't matter who I met, who I was talking to, there was no their lessons. The voice never went, that's their lesson, you know. It was always your lesson, your lesson, your lesson. And that was good because that, for me, that's, that's the way out of projection. That's the way out of blaming. That's the way out of, of thinking there's a cause outside your mind, you know, is always pay attention to your emotions. How do you feel? How do you feel? Your lesson. How do you feel? How do you feel? Be authentic. Be honest. How do you feel? That, that really sped up the process for me. Because I wasn't trying to figure the world out. I'd already spent 10 years in university trying to figure the world out. Failed miserably. I gave up <laughs> after those 10 years. I kind of finally got into psychology and got into the mind, and then I really knew I didn't know <laughs> what, what anything meant, you know. But listening to all these experts who'd written books and turned, turned their learning, so-called worldly learning, into careers, you know, I, I would say constantly, to the spirit, these professors really don't know what they're talking about. And the spirit was like, and you do? And I was, no, okay, I don't. You know, they're just reflecting my own doubts, all right. I don't get it. I can't figure the world out. So, so the first, maybe the first two key aspects of really accelerating on the spiritual journey is to start to realize that, that you cannot figure the world out. You can't figure anything out about it. It's just a trick when you seem to believe you know something. That's why the first lessons of the Course, you know, nothing I see means anything. I've given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. I do not understand what anything is for. He's not bluffing. He's just saying, if you can get this, you're going to be really happy in a hurry. Because <laughs> you're going to go into that blank slate, you know, that tabula rasa, really quick. And so that's the first thing I had to really be convinced of, is that I, I didn't know anything about anything. And I didn't have to apologize about that, you know. I, and neither did I have to judge myself as being dumb or stupid. I could just say I was being more humble and admitting that I really couldn't figure it out. My friend Jennifer, who's been on these last two shiitakas with me, she would oftentimes frequently find herself in some room in her in her house or where she lives and then she just would have have no idea how she got there or what she was doing and instead of judging herself like you idiot you why are, you know, you forgot why you came down into this room it would be she would start hearing this in a foreign accent some voice like Deepak or or some German voice or something poking fun and I had that happen a lot to me too where I just I had these moments where I just, I couldn't remember what happened before or how, how or why I even got there. And, and yet there was a calmness with it. It was a calmness like, this is good. Not like you're losing your mind or you've lost it now or whatever. I would really get into that. And, and there were moments of openness. And then I could really see that that was part of my lesson of just presence, being presence and not judging anything. That's perfectly taken care of. There was never any harm. No harm ever came to me from those Chauncey Gardner moments or those Mr. Magoo moments. I was actually feeling much better, more Magooish, you know, every year and, and perfectly taken care of as well. And so that's how I knew that it, I was on the right track. And then you go with it and then you find that, that things are all taken care of. When I first started traveling, I thought, well, this is going to be complex. I mean, how can you, how can you just simply travel? You know, there's just so many logistics that 
have to be taken care of and the traveling. That's why a lot of people just choose to remain somewhat stationary because it's airports and searches and tickets and reroutings and delays and blah 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 and all these things. Who would subject himself to that unless I could just forget about it? You know, it's like forget about it all. Just stay present and let me do it through you. You know, let me do it through you, even including other people handling aspects of things big huge gatherings and I just show up I think and have fun and think well wow, that was fun and I didn't have to know about all the details what went on behind the scenes I just trusted the spirit had it and and so I did become better and better at just giving it over to spirit and just remembering all I had to do was show up I I loved giving talks because I didn't know what I was going to talk about I don't know what I'm talking about today I I didn't come here with an idea of what I would talk about or whether I would talk even. I never have an expectation that I will actually talk, you know, which is kind of good to have too because those things happen too, you know. Everyone just wants to do eye gazing. Okay, let's do eye gazing. <laughs> I've had a lot of one-on-ones like that where people book a half an hour with me and then they just sit in this chair across from me and then they get all comfortable and they go, and they don't say a word for the whole half an hour. The previous one talked try to talk my arm off the next one not a word just eye gazing for the half an hour you know you it's all just given there's not any expectations of how it's supposed to go so that's really what the spiritual journey is I think the process is letting go of the expectations even the most basic ones the most basic assumptions you you let go you let go more and more and more and it, it works out so well that it's almost surprising a little bit that it could be so easy when before you thought it's oh no it's never going to be that easy it's going to be you know a lot of work I have not found as I've got into this surrender mode I have not found it to be work at all it's like you know having just fun all the time it's very childlike but there's no there's not even any preparation for it you know people say do you do you like meditate before you talk oh no no <laughs> if if you mean like meditate as an activity of sitting and closing eyes and everything like that. No, it's all turned into a meditation. It's just one big meditation. I don't do anything before anything because I don't believe in preparation anymore. You know, I'm kind of enjoying the way things are turning out. I'm always happy if somebody calls me on the phone, sends me an email. I'm always willing to be truly helpful uh, around the clock, really. But really, there's no shoulds and ought tos and have tos. There's no pressure. There's no got to do this, got to do that, got to get this done. You know, it's like if there, a lot of times, human beings have like to do list. But, but if you're being done through, this the spirits, is doing the sequencing. You know, the spirits just giving you, one moment at a time, one thing at a time. So you don't. It's not. There's no pressure because it's not your list. It's it's its list, and you're being done through, and you feel glorious at being done through. So, it doesn't really even feel like a list, you know. Like when we make it things into a linear list, and we put expectations on, you know, trying to get them accomplished in the morning or one day or one week, you know, then the pressure comes in. But this is more of just what's given, and then what's given, and then what's given, and and things can be stopped or interrupted. I don't even know what an interruption is. Um, I don't believe I can be interrupted because because it's such a continual flow that everything is part of that flow and there's nothing outside of that flow so it's actually impossible to get even interrupted. So you obviously, you know, that's beautiful too because you, there's, there's no offense taken in anything. Just acceptance, just pure acceptance.